This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Smile, the makers of world-class software like PDF Pen for Mac, PDF Pen Pro for Mac, PDF Pen for iPhone and iPad, PDF Pen Scan Plus for iPhone and iPad, Text Expander for Mac, and Text Expander for iPhone and iPad. Learn more about all their great products at smilesoftware.com. And by Atlassian, the makers of Jira, Confluence, HipChat, and Bitbucket helping teams everywhere team up to create what's next. Visit Atlassian.com to learn more. Welcome to the Mac Jury on Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community. I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, I always introduce our panels as distinguished because they always are, and this panel is no exception. Uh, we have a great topic this time around. We're going to talk about, uh, or at least we're going to start with the topic of, has Apple lost its sense of urgency? Uh, so first up, and, and I say we start with that because you never know where we're going to go. So let's let's see who's here and who we're going to hear from, and we'll go from there. Um, first up, uh, the man with uh, who is in deep cover. He may be in witness protection, Mr. Brian Chaffin. <laughs> Brian, it's, it's great to have you. Please call me Brand Chapstick. <laughs> not, <laughs> not that other name. I don't know that other name. Anyway, yes, okay. I'm, I'm, it's, thank you. I'm here. Thank you. Good yeah, to be here. It's it's good to have you. It's good to have you. Brian had a, a few technical problems, and so he's here in in still mode. But we're still darn glad to have his wisdom. So, oh, thank you. Where Brian, when you're when you're not in witness protection, where can the folks find you? Uh, I am the editor in chief at the Mac Observer at macobserver.com. You can find my personal blog at geektells.com. T e l l s. Great, great. Oh yeah, um, I do that that Apple Context Machine thing too, that podcast. Oh yeah, 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 with uh, with Mr. Gamut, I believe. Yes, yes. Okay, great. Good to have you. Ne- next up, uh, Mr. Steve Sandy, who I haven't seen for a while. Steve, it's great to have you as always. It's great to be here. I, you know, been kind of doing my regular stint of uh, going between vacations and then uh, trying to. Make a success out of uh, my site, which is uh, Apple World Today. Uh, there's two of us there, myself and uh, Dennis Sellers, and we uh, we are the chief cooks and bottle washers there, and we do everything else too. But uh, we're slowly but surely kind of getting there. I also do a daily podcast for the site that's called the uh, uh, Apple World Today News Update, and. Uh, Cool thing was, is just yesterday we got the podcast, so it's working in Apple News, in hey. Apple News format. So it's working pretty cool. You can actually listen to the podcast from Apple News. Wow! Congratulations. I didn't. I was not aware of that. So I got now. I got to go and check that out. It, it's fun. Yeah, hey. just uh, look us up on. Uh, go into the Apple News thing, search for Apple World Today, and put us on your favorites, and you'll you'll enjoy it every day, as well as all the stories we put out there. So. Great. Great. That's what we're doing. <laughs> good. Well, it's good to have you as well. Thanks. Last but absolutely not least, the gentleman who actually kind of incited this riot, uh, Mr. Mark Fuccio. <laughs> Mark, it's, it's good to have you back. <laughs> Chuck, it's always a pleasure to be uh, invited to participate in your podcast and talk with your guests. And I'm glad to be here today. I'm having a little bit of Skype problems, so hopefully it doesn't get in the way. Um, I'm involved. I'm out here in Silicon Valley, although now I'm at the moment, I'm on an undisclosed location in California's Central Coast. Um, I'm involved in a whole bunch of projects, and the easiest way for people to find me is on Twitter at, uh, at Mark Fuccio, M-A-R-K-F-U-C-C-I-O. So, with that, back to you, sir. Terrific, Mark, sir. Uh, if I may interrupt, I'm hoping that the project has something to do with winemaking. One of my projects, so that would be a fourth project. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, we, we, just, we just bottled our Chardonnay a couple of weeks ago, and everything is set until uh, the new crush uh, coming up uh, whenever Mother Nature gives us grapes, sometime in September or early October. Awesome. And yeah. I, sh- I should mention, there's kind of an unofficial theme here with this podcast. So, Steve, you and I are the only two that are not in witness protection, apparently, for in one way or another. And... <laughs> I, when I was in San Francisco for WWDC, um, I was eating 
apple pie at midnight with Brian one night, and I was eating pizza at midnight with Mark the, another night. So, <laughs> and I have no idea why I felt compelled to admit that. It's just the way it works out. I, I wish I'd been at the, the at the pizza one. Yeah, well, it was good pizza. It was good pizza. Okay. So. so, I mean, why didn't you invite me? What, what are you saying? I think you were. You have, not, a, you have a problem. You have a problem with me, Chuck? No, no. I hey, I was. Oh, oh it's Mark. Mark has a problem with <laughs> you, me. No, no. I invited oh all my sorts of goodness. People. What have I walked <laughs> into? <laughs> what? Jeez. Now I'm sorry. I'm I brought being, the whole thing up. <laughs> I'm being a troublemaker. I'm just being a troublemaker. That, well, that's why we love you, Mark. You're the one that uh, kind of called this jury. Folks may not know, but I, I, I invite Mac jury members to, you know, if they have something they want to talk about. Let me know, you know, invite some friends if they want, or let me pick the, the panel. And so uh, you brought up this topic, and I'm going to let you lead us off. Uh, does Apple suffer from a sense of urgency at this point, in your opinion? I think it does. And the thing that brought this up is uh, Monday a week ago, I dropped my uh, almost a year old MacBook off at Apple. Um, had to have a new screen and uh, re you know, repairs or replacement on the keyboard. And on the way out, I hadn't played with uh, MacBook Pro and the Apple Pencil, so I went to uh, work with one and uh, discovered, lo and behold, that none of Apple's premier apps, you know, neither Pages nor, hello there, Steve, you tempting tantrus you, <laughs> neither Pages nor Keynote nor Numbers work with a pencil. <laughs> pages, you know, Notes does, but all their premier apps don't, and I figured, you know, this is absolutely shameful because it's been six months or more since the world has known about that device. And I can't help but think that Apple under Mr. Jobs would be uh, an entirely different place. And uh, that sent me thinking a little bit more that, you know, Steve, uh, for all his strengths, I mean, he certainly wasn't a normal guy. You know, there was these stories about he calls up an artist, you know, uh, on a, on a Sunday while they were getting ready to launch the iPhone and was complaining that the color of the yellow was off by, it turns out to be you know, three, you know, three digits in its, uh, in its color setting. And I just, and I just don't think Apple has uh, anybody uh, like that uh, who's running roughshod over the products and you know, the sort of the chief no sayer. And I think what's happening is stuff is getting out and hard stuff. They're telling Tim, well, Tim, it's just not ready. We can't ship it. It's not ready. Well, at the same time, they send out you know stupid things like the watch, where you know they basically uh, an all but name admitted that uh, it's been out, and now now they're ending their beta period. So uh, you know, I think that that, and you know, we haven't seen any updates to uh, the Macintosh, even simple things like just a processor bump. So yeah, I do think Apple has uh, some sort of uh, sense of urgency problems or you know different set of priorities. Hmm. Okay. Steve, uh, how, how about you? How do you feel about any of Mark's examples or some of your own? Um, actually, I've got kind of some of the, the feeling, same feeling he does on certain items. But when he was talking about the Mac uh, not getting processor speed bumps and things like that, the, the machine that's sitting in front of me right now is a perfect example of one that they, they do seem to pay attention to, and that's the 27-inch uh, iMac. And I change mine out every three years usually at the end of that time it's like i'm you know ready to throttle the machine because it seems really slow but i mean this thing uh i've got to see if i can actually bring up about this mac here and see how fast it is but yeah it's a four gigahertz intel core i7 uh processor the one i had before that was i don't know 2.8 or something like that for uh three years uh before it's much faster. The screen is Retina 5K. It looks great. It's fast. It's uh, except for yesterday, <laughs> it it uh, seems to be a lot more stable. So, but you take a look at some of the other products, and I have to agree with you. Uh, for instance, the Mac Pro has just been ignored since it was. Uh, uh, you know, first introduced, it seems like they just said, "Hey, here's the Mac Pro. Everybody, be happy." We're going to forget it for the next four or five years or whatever it happens to be. Uh, MacBooks, I think they're they're suffering from a little bit of not urgency, but uh, kind of not knowing what the heck they're doing. You know, you've got the the uh, twelve inch MacBook, which is great, but for me, I thought it was way too small. You've got the MacBook Air, which you know, is still pretty darn good. I, I like the the unit, uh, 11 and 13 inch. And then you've got the MacBook Pro, 
uh, with all its ports and bells and whistles and everything else uh, at, what, 13 and 15 inch. And it seems to me like there's almost a little bit of uh, jumble there. You know, if they'd come out with a, a larger MacBook and just get rid of the uh, uh, MacBook Air altogether and just kind of turn that line into what, you know, Steve Jobs used to have his little four-corner drawing there. You have the, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it, the pro model, and then you've got the entry model. And that's kind of what they need to do there. Uh iPod, who cares? Because that thing's kind of <laughs> kind of gone. I, you know, we don't need to be urgent about the iPod. They, they ought to just get rid of that line altogether. Uh, iPhone, though, I really have to agree with you, Mark. I think they've lost a the sense of urgency. And I know there are some people saying, I don't know, they ought to just come out with them every two years. You take a look at their main competition, which is a company called Samsung. And they're doing some pretty innovative things. Maybe they're not perfect devices, but I, I got to admit, I look at some of the ads, you know, with uh, whoever the idiot is who's walking around pouring champagne all over his <laughs> his uh, uh, Samsung Galaxy Seven, whatever the heck it is, and I go, why can't I do that with not with champagne? Of course, it'd just be cheap wine instead. But why can't I do that with? My uh, iPhone, why can't I accidentally spill a beer on it and not have to worry about it? You know, where is that? Uh, and you got, I got to admit the fact that they, uh, I think it's the Galaxy Note Edge. I don't know. They have way too many models. Uh, that kind of nice edge look on there really looks good. Maybe it's just a gimmick, but it looks good. And uh, honestly, I, I think with the iPhone, they need to step it up and they need to step it up quick. Hmm. Okay. Sorry, I just went on a rant. No, that's no, that's all right. I mean, that's what that's what we're here for. Yeah. That's what so we're Steve, here for. Steve, I would, if I could make just a counter, I think some of the comments you make about Macs, I agree with you. They're absolutely wonderful products. Uh, it's just that uh, you know their refresh cycle on some of them is way too long. Like you forgot one, exactly. The, the Mac Mini. You know, I think you know. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're absolutely right there because in its well, fine. That's okay. I think the Cookie Monster forgot it too. So <laughs> <laughs> everybody's forgotten about the Mac yes. Mini. <laughs> yeah. Brian, uh, jump into this uh, because I know I have yeah. some. I have some feelings on what they're saying, but I'm going to phone to let you go. It's a bunch of balderdash to me, man. <laughs> Balderdash. Listen, no wonder Apple, he's witness protection. <laughs> <laughs> Apple is not the same company, and and. To um, Mark's point, the man who would call up a Google executive at Sunday during uh, during his worship service, complaining about a color being off by um, you know just a, a, essentially an imperceptible amount from what it should be, that man is gone and he's not coming back, and we're probably not going to see his like, you know for another 100 years. And lamenting that he's gone is just kind of a fruitless and pointless exercise. Apple is a different company than it was with Steve. It has to be a different company than it was with Steve. And it can't be the same company without him. And I, it just, it just, it seems, it seems... <sighs> It seems entirely pointless to to sit around kvetching about how awesome it used to be. Because first of all, things weren't always awesome under Steve. Steve made plenty of mistakes. And secondly, things are pretty awesome at Apple today, even if it's not quite what some of us want in some cases. It's you know, Apple's doing a lot of really, really cool things. Some of those things Apple probably wouldn't have done under Steve. So you know, I mean, you yeah. know, it's, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta get with the reality. I, so, I, 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 go ahead, I, please. I, yeah, I, I do agree with you. I mean, I was not implying anything about uh, you know the the nature of the transition. You know, uh, in terms of uh, executive style and what they're doing, I think maybe maybe you're bringing some of that in terms of maybe your analysis or thinking about the company. I, I was just pointing out that uh, you know sort of consistent with my thesis they seem to be have lost that sort of maniacal edge to always have you know, the latest and greatest product 
Um, but Apple never had the latest and greatest product. Apple is always late to the market and did things no, a little no, bit better compared, than everybody else. Compared to themselves, they've always had latest and greatest products, and uh, you know ma- many things have always very been very 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 competitive. And I think but, yeah. so. Um, but Apple enters markets late with best in class products, and I would say that in most cases, Apple has those best in class products. Now, there's stuff that Apple's doing with iPhone that the competition couldn't even dream about how to copy. Yeah, you can't pour champagne over your iPhone. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, yeah, it's true. At least, at least not until Apple eliminates. Have you tried the apple juice. juice? Have you tried apple juice? <laughs> but, but I mean, I think that I think yes, Apple does tend to enter products late until they're way right early, like in things like the Mac, you know, way way back when, or, or the watch recently. So you know, the tr- I think the truth is all, all over the map in terms of that. But uh, you know, I think that uh, you know, just uh, they're not maintaining. I think they're maybe if we stated, you know, are they are they properly tending and husbanding their product line? You know, that might be a little less provocative and a little less spam baity than has Apple lost a sense of urgency. Well, so I, okay, I I will readily I, I have gone on my own epic rants about the Mac Pro. I think that Apple should be embarrassed um, for itself for what it's done with the Mac Pro. I think that that the fact that Apple is is selling the Mac Pro three and a half years or three years after it was introduced, two and a half years after it shipped for the same price that it was selling that same device two and a half years ago, is beyond shameful and embarrassing. Right. I, so I, mean, the, the, I, I will, I will, I will give you that. But I don't know if it's necessarily a sense of urgency. I would, I would actually call that more of a sense of uh, economic priorities. And the Mac Pro languished under Steve Jobs too. Hey, maybe uh, they're going to rebrand the Mac Pro as the Mac, next Mac Mini. They, they might, they might. So <laughs> Here's, here's a true story. Uh, in one of the other three projects I'm involved in, uh, one of the fellows on that uh, also, uh, he's, he's got a pretty good uh, web design business, and uh, he's in the instructional circuit. And uh, a couple of months ago, he came back and uh, you know, asked uh, Chris how to go. And uh, you know, he, was, uh, he was a little bit embarrassed because uh, you know, doing something using Adobe After Effects, one of his students in the class, you know, his machine was way more powerful you know, then, uh, and then this fellow's and okay. He admittedly he's got a two year old MacBook, but he was, he was blown away that this guy had sort of like, you know, a cheap $650 Dell. Um, and then since then, subsequently he went in and investigated, okay, it was all due to the nature of Adobe using GPU and he goes and, oh, well, maybe it's time to upgrade to the Mac pro. And he goes and he looks at that and, you know, the highest end, you know, $8,500 or something or other, he configured, had less powerful graphics than a $1,200, you know, HP machine. So, um, I don't know. Is that, uh, you know, yeah, what, what, what is, what is the message in there? I mean, you know, if, if, if the, if it's not that maybe they're losing their focus, you know, uh, you know, is it, uh, is it something maybe are all the people who bitch and moan, Oh, Apple just doesn't cares about creative pros. Um, which is something I absolutely don't believe, but maybe that's the only theory that might be consistent with what Brian is saying as an explanation for this behavior. It's not languishing. It's being done deliberately by design. This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Atlassian, the makers of Jira, Confluence, HipChat, and Bitbucket, helping teams everywhere team up to create what's next. Visit Atlassian.com to learn more. One thing that amazes me about some of today's software developers, they make fantastic products but skimp on training their customers to use them. Manuals seem to get smaller or even slip into non-existence as the software gets more powerful. Even with easy-to-use software, a quick look at how to get started is always welcome. That's why I was so pleased to visit Atlassian's YouTube channel and find a ton of videos about their products. Not just customer testimonials, but demos and instructions on using Jira, Confluence, HipChat, and Bitbucket, along with all the other Atlassian products. That means that when you visit Atlassian.com and download their free trial software, you can also take full advantage of the capabilities of that software by seeing it in action. See how Jira can help your team plan and track their progress. See how Confluence can help organize your work and documents all in one place. See how HipChat can facilitate communication between team members on any device. 
See how Bitbucket's Git code collaboration puts it all together for your team to put it all together. Find out more about all the Atlassian products at Atlassian.com, then get your team up to speed and working to create what's next. That's Atlassian.com. Thanks to Atlassian for their support of Mac Voices. So I, I need to get into this um, because I, I, I hear what a lot of you are saying, but there are times that it, it, it does make me a little crazy because if Apple brings out things too fast, if anybody brings out things too fast, but especially with Apple, because Apple seems to be under more of a microscope than just about anyone. If they bring it out too fast, then they're criticized for, well, I just bought this six, eight, ten months ago, and now I don't have the latest and greatest. Yeah, but that's that's just like one of the stupidest form of complaints of all time. <laughs> well, but that, but that, that, <laughs> that makes it no less... No less but vocal. It still happens. It, it, whether it's vocal or whether it's valid or not, I agree with Brian. It's not valid, but people do make it. You know, yeah, unfortunately. And and Mark, okay, to, fair enough. To, to your example, you know, two years old. I mean, uh, that's. I think we've had a, a MacBook Pro refresh about every year and a half now. I've, I think I've got that right, and I think we're almost due for another one. If if so, you know, by the time this airs, who knows? We could have, we could have a new MacBook Pro. It's possible. It's, it's, it's possible. possible. So you know, and I, I realize I'm going to sound like an Apple apologist, but in which, in which case, in which case, this should never see the light of day. <laughs> well, no, because I think I think there there are a lot of other. Just, I mean, I, I no way am I going to going to defend the, the Mac Pro. Um, I think that's crazy. I think the that, that that's that that really has been ignored. I think the MacBook, uh, the Mac Mini. I'm not sure that all of us aren't trying to make the Mac Mini into something that we wish it was, as opposed to what it's supposed to be. And and that's that's for you all to decide, and the, the viewers and listeners to decide. The iPhone, uh, you know what? I, I I look at plenty of people carrying around Samsungs, but that's another company that every ten minutes it seems like they 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 release a new phone. Well, yeah, I suppose I'm simple minded about this. I'm thinking that you know high tech, you know, sort of on a regular cycle. It's almost like the seasons, you know. So to do things like bumping processors, because. As, as Brian was pointing out before, and, and Steve as well, that the Macs are fine products, but some of the people, the creative people at the bleeding edge, you know, for them, time is money. That you know, that 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 fifteen percent or eighteen or twenty percent upgrade, you know, is worth is worth it for them. You know, and you know, maybe we just need to get out of the cycle of thinking that Apple's going to be on a regular upgrade cycle. Um, now, I know. A couple of years ago, Tim Cook said, oh, he's just going to button down on increase the amount of secrecy. And you know, I think people at the time, maybe out loud or maybe it was imaginary, just kind of snickered. Apple, get even more secret. How could that be possible? Well, it certainly was, right? The, when they announced uh, Swift uh, two years ago, that was certainly you know, sort of, you know, everybody gasped. You know, because they came out with all sorts of stuff. So uh, they, they've done things. Now, um, I think you know just uh, yeah, it's, you know so this 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 pollster shareholder just thinks you know they should you know maybe they set themselves a hard standard in the past, but they have demonstrated as a much smaller company that they can maintain that agility and constantly update their products. And I think that's what success is and it, and drives a lot of high tech is having new products for people. It's either you know your old people come and get them, you know, and you worry about you know there is a little bit of trickle down right in the aftermarket. Well. Apple's trying to seize that, you know, with some of their uh, you know, iPhone recycling programs. So again, I think that um, you know, to the extent that they're worried about you know sales and it's it sort of oh, don't look over here, look at this bright shiny object. We we really want to be a services company. You know, I mean, just you know, this is stuff like that is you know, just <laughs> you know pointlessly silly. You know, it's just sort of double down. Get back to your meeting, make cool stuff, and make it available on a regular cycle. Make it like fashion, if you will, and people will buy it. Uh, yeah, but Mark, some of that, I, 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 uh, I, 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 don't, I don't even know where to start. Um, uh, well, okay. I think Steve uh, to, has a comment there. <laughs> well, well, Steve, let me just get this in real quick. To your point about about your your project partner, who you know, if if the creatives do indeed need the latest and greatest, what is he or she doing with a two year old MacBook Pro? You know, that's that would be my my first argument. Yeah. Why aren't they toting around, a, you know, the latest and greatest MacBook Pro, whatever it is, and then when it's t when the next one comes out, you send it off to Gazelle and get yourself a new one. 
how about a 5K iMac? You know, there, there are things out there that, that can fill some of those gaps. I'm not suggesting all of them, but some of them. Steve, I'm sorry, yeah. I, I, but I wanted to make sure I got that in. Go. Uh, really, uh, the comment I was thinking of, you know, uh, at one point there, uh, you were kind of making the, the point, Mark, that, uh, you know, Apple kind of missing some of these markets. And I think Brian kind of alluded to that as well. And I think one market that they're, they're really, truly missing right now uh, that seems to be getting hot, of course, it seems to have been hot, so to speak, for uh, 20 years now is virtual reality. And, uh, you know, you have uh, the op, uh, great, I cannot, op never op think of the Oculus Rift, thank you, which uh, requires, you know, one hell of a box uh, to run yeah. anyway. No Apple uh, support at all because they said, hey, you guys really don't do anything <laughs> that, uh, you know, makes it, yes. takes advantage of uh, uh, GPUs that can do what we need it to do. And, uh, I, you know, gamers are a surprisingly large and spending market out there. I think Apple's kind of just looking away from that. Gaming is definitely in a hell of a lot better shape on, on the Mac and in iOS than it was before. Uh, but, you know, I think that's kind of the direction of the future. Uh, you're hearing some of the comments from people about uh, some of the games that they're able to play. And uh, it's like, I hope you're, you're not going to miss the boat, Apple. See, I think it's interesting, Steve, you bring up the Oculus Rift. Um, because at NAB this year, I, I did, a, did an interview with Tim Dashwood, and he's sitting there editing 360-degree video in Final Cut. But Oculus mm -hmm. is, is complaining that, well, Apple, you can't keep up. So, you know, for the gamers, perhaps. I don't know. But... Is, is, is that a failure of Apple, or is that just Oculus demand, making unreasonable demands and saying you have to have all this graphics horsepower? I, I, don't, I don't know. And it could be, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. So another, another data point is that um, this goes straight back to the Apple, you know, to the Mac Pro, which is that um, you know, I've, I've been told by multiple sources uh, who do a lot of work in Hollywood that you know, they're – they're not buying the trash can model. What they're doing is they're going out and they're finding older, the aluminum, you know, sort of the aluminum tower, the so-called cheese grater models, and that they're finding it's more economical that uh, if we're about, uh, you know, 24 to $2,600, they can retrofit it with the latest and greatest, uh, you know, Pentium CPU. So, you know, it, uh, and they can upgrade, uh, you know, graphics and you know, all sorts of memory on it. So they're finding that's the way that uh, they're going out and, uh, you know, getting uh, systems, you know, because, you know, the, you know, the, the creators, they, they love, you know, OS 10, but, you know, it's falling behind hardware wise. Well, the aftermarket, because the modularity of, uh, you know, the Intel components so provides them a way to do that. You know, I know people in the Bay Area where uh, what they do is, you know, they build these, you know, the proverbial Hackintosh. They go out and they get, yeah. you, know, uh, you know, tricked out, uh, you know, system. They buy components and then they just install uh, OS 10 on it. So, or soon to be Mac OS, I guess. Um, so again, I think you know, this is to me this is systemic signs that uh, you know there's this gap between what the market wants. You know, I mean, these customers are spending you know, th tens of you know many thousands of dollars, and uh, there's just nothing to uh, uh, you know take their money and solve their problem coming out of uh, of Cupertino. Today's edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Smile, the makers of PDF Pen for Mac, PDF Pen Pro for Mac, PDF Pen for iPhone and iPad. PDF Pen Scan Plus for iPhone and iPad, Text Expander for Mac, and Text Expander for iPhone and iPad. Find out more about all their great products at smilesoftware.com. This time, I want to tell you about PDF Pen from Smile, because as much as I used it before, I'm finding more and more things that PDF Pen can help me with. For some reason, I've had the need to annotate and mark up documents more than before, and most of those documents come to me in PDF format. PDF Pen makes it easy to highlight items, add scribbles that other people might think of as drawings, and annotate to my heart's content. But now I can do much more. For example, with PDF Pen's new audio annotations, I can throw in my thoughts as an audio recording, which saves me lots of time. Sometimes it's necessary to do a full-fledged edit on a document, but it was scanned to me. No problem. 
PDF Pen's OCR capabilities turn it into a Word document that I can open in Word or in Apple's Pages if I wish and do more than just annotate it. Occasionally, I want to do the opposite, take information out. Of course, with legal documents, you don't want to modify the document itself. With PDF Pen's redacting feature, I can black out information without changing the contents. And I mean really black it out, not just draw over it. If you redact with PDF Pen, you can rest assured no one is going to see what was deleted. Those are just some of the PDF Pen features that I'm using more and more. Merging PDFs, adding stamps to my documents, syncing PDFs to my iPad. Those and many others are in there pitching too. I would love to have you find out just how much you can do with PDF Pen, and that's why I want you to go to smilesoftware.com right now and download a free demo. Fire it up and find out all the capabilities you've been missing. With PDF Pen and PDF Pen Pro, you won't have to say, gee, I wish I could, because you can. That's PDF Pen and PDF Pen Pro for Mac, iPhone, and iPad. All from Smile, the makers of world-class software at smilesoftware.com. Thanks to Smile for being the longest-running sponsor of Mac Voices. Brian, I know I've heard you and Jeff talk about it on the Apple Context Machine, and you've been involved in conversations on the, the Daily Observations podcast. Are, is, is this whole discussion part of the fact that we're not, we are not, and, and the people we're talking about are not Apple's primary audience any longer? Is that part of the problem? Well, I, I think by definition, um, the Mac itself is not, or Mac customers are not Apple's primary audience anymore, uh, pr primary customer base anymore, and that the professional market is most specifically not Apple's primary focus anymore. And that's too bad. I, I, don't, I don't like it. Uh, John Keat, uh, the devil's advocate, has written for us and, and spoken with us on some podcasts about uh, how um, it was the professional markets that provided the halo effect that Apple needed to, um, to, to get its feet back under it when Steve Jobs came back. And that it was the professional markets, in large part, that kept Apple going uh, at that time. Uh, and I, I agree with that. But the, you know, the reality is that Apple has zero loyalty. Apple does not care about yesterday. Apple is never interested in what in what we as a customer did for them yesterday, or or its employees. You know, or, you know, who cares what you did yesterday? What are you going to do next? That was one of Steve Jobs' big things, and I think it's one of the things that's been enshrined in Apple University. And so Apple doesn't. I don't really think Apple cares all that much about the professional markets, um, at least not in terms of the desktop. That part of Apple's business has been shrinking, and we're seeing the results of it. I don't like it, but I don't. I don't think it's you know. I don't think it's a mistake. I think it's a calculated decision on Apple's part. Wow, that's interesting. So, if well, it's I mean, do, what, do we do, are we going to sit here and, and say to ourselves that uh, you know just Apple just forgot? Of course not. This is one of the most carefully calculated companies on the planet. So, could it be that some of the some of the delays we're seeing in things and 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 I I want to go back to Mark one of Mark's well, original. That would, be, that would be consistent with my thesis because you know lack of urgency doesn't have to be uh, sort of an accidental careless thing. It could just be well, sorry, Mark, you guys are great great C. You know we have you're much seeing you're seeing an that, Apple a yeah. lack of. You're seeing a lack of urgency for the things that you care about. Apple has an enormous amount of urgency for a bunch of other things. Like, you know, what, what it's doing in the car world, it has tremendous urgency. Supposedly, Apple has uh, a thousand-person team developing VR stuff, speaking to uh, Steve's point about VR. Um, we know that Apple has a large team that's working on uh, improvements to the App Store under Phil Schiller. I mean, a a Apple is this... Is this has become this huge company and it's a company that's under transition and the things that, especially us old guard, you know, the, 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 the like the four of us here, right. We've been with Apple for a long time. We, we want our max, darn it. You know, they, <laughs> we, we're not seeing that urgency aimed at us because that urgency is being aimed elsewhere including the iPhone. I, I kind of, I kind of am not very comfortable with the idea of, of letting, Letting alone, uh, let, letting the idea lay there that uh, Apple is in some way falling behind the the Android world or falling behind Samsung just because it doesn't have a couple of specific features when it has all these things that Android devices can't do. 
I mean, Apple is showing a lot of urgency with uh, with a lot of these things. It's just not the things that we wish they would show the urgency for. Good point. And, and to that, Brian, I think you've got a, a really good point. One thing that isn't, I mean, that is very important to a lot of people, but they never think about it, is security. And, uh, you know, privacy is a big, big issue for a lot of people. You tell people, you know, or you talk to people and say, do you want, you know, all of your, uh, you know, your tweets to be able to uh, be, well, tweets are public, never mind. But all of your uh, private messages to be uh you know, capable of being hack, hacked or grabbed by somebody? Do you want uh, your photos that you're sending to your friends uh, necessarily to be out uh, in front of everybody? And they go, my God, no, you know, that type of thing. Apple has really made that commitment to privacy. And, uh, you know, we definitely see in the Android world, it ain't there. So uh, very good point. Apple is really seeing the urgency in the privacy uh, realm. And I think they're they're uh, definitely moving in that direction. They're spending a lot of time and effort on it. Uh, whether or not that's something that is flashy enough uh, to sell phones, watches, and uh, even personal computers is is another question. That's a great point, Steve. I want to go back to to um, to one of Mark's things. I, I do. I am a little surprised that we don't have uh, Apple Pencil support for the productivity apps um that that one mark i I, i'm kind of with you i think that you know especially for keynote and for um yeah steve (laughs) steve has this thing with a floating pencil um you know that one i'm not sure you need it in numbers necessarily (laughs) but uh the other one the the other ones maybe so (laughs) this is is ridiculous um you know i'm uh, brian i'm I'm not doing anything and Brian, I'm with you on the phone, though. Uh, I, you know, some of the some of the features I see, they just, I mean, they either don't interest me, and but I, I think there's a key point here, and I, and I've often said it about Windows versus Mac, and I say it now about Android versus iOS. These, th- those are, it's apples and oranges. Sorry, but it's it's apples and oranges. You know, it, maybe just maybe to the, the average consumer, it shouldn't be, or maybe it is to them, but. Android is so full of holes and so full of problems. Windows, you still have an amazing amount of updates. And Mac and iOS are a lot more secure. Depending on who you talk to, they're probably a lot more stable. I don't know. Um, that that one can be debated. But I, th- I think you have to look at the ecosystems and, and the underlying characteristics of those when you're making the purchasing decisions and, and not just saying, oh, I'm... I'm going to go with you know the the latest sexiest feature or the latest sexiest model. You you need to be in it just a little more for the long haul. So well, Steve, that's that's subjective, right? No, I mean, listen. If someone wants to buy an Android device because Little Wayne can, can pour champagne on on it for you know for an hour, more power to them. Matter of fact, if that's going to be the basis of your purchasing decision, um, I can't yeah, wonder about you. <laughs> same, same, piece, same thing. So actually, no. I, I was just thinking about this. You know, just uh, Steve's uh, you know, just refocusing on the privacy for a moment. You know, is so over the past couple of years, as I've been a guest from time to time on on this show, one of the theses I've had is that. Uh, so back then, it was slaying the idea of Apple needs to come out with a you know, two hundred dollar phone. And my point was, no, you know, Apple's growth is going to become come from you know making devices that are going to pick off Android users. And I'm thinking now maybe this uh, this privacy that may become a sharp shining beacon that uh, you know people may wake up and realize, yes, <laughs> I do want uh, my. Uh, I do want to exercise my right to privacy, not because I'm doing anything bad. It's just that, you know, what I do is stuff that, uh, you know, I don't want uh, the government to be snooping on no matter what, you know, because, you know, whatever, whoever's in the administration the next January, I think, you know, civil libertarians are going to be worrying about just this ongoing invasive uh, trend of government to try to suck up uh, more and more information about everybody. So uh, I think in that regard, uh, um you know, th- that bet on privacy may be another just long-term bet on the differential value of uh, the Apple ecosystem. I'm, st- I'm still thinking around in the back of my mind that, you know, Brian's point, you know, which is, 
uh, again, consistent with sort of my question is, you know, it's it's not a it's not a result of uh, you know accidental schedule slips. It's it's a deliberate slip. <laughs> We're not going to have more than one upgrade a year. No, if that's late, well, it's just late. You know, um, you know, they're just. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's the can way they get. Maybe that's the way they can get all these people is redeploy them internally because it's a mess to hire people in Silicon Valley. It's uh, very competitive. Well, that that is such a great segue. Can I can I bring another Robert, element into this? Sure. Great. Well, Steve, Steve, did you have something to say? No. So John Keat wrote a piece for us. Uh, again, I'm going to channel him some more, um, talking about Apple's failure to scale. Yes. <laughs> and let's actually look at how Apple runs. Apple runs very lean, right? So the like one of Steve Jobs' whole things about management is that you have these really small teams. And these really small teams are uh, are empowered to act and make decisions and you run like a startup. And so each individual doesn't matter how big Apple was getting, how successful it was, each individual project would would run lean and mean like a startup. And, and the ultimate no sayer. Right. And of course now now Apple has so many things going. I mean like I mean, Steve, Steve Jobs would not be able to keep his fingers in everything that Apple is doing right now. You can argue that therefore Apple should do less things if you want. Again, I would call that an exercise of utility, so you know, whatevs. But if you look at Apple's practice of only hiring and keeping a team players and moving those a team players onto the into the onto the next project there are only so many a team people you can hire there's only so many a team people in the world and a lot of them don't want to work at apple and a lot of them are going to be paid enough money not to work at apple you know be paid by other rich companies to work there instead so as apple starts working on more and more projects like the car, like virtual reality, plus all the other things that Apple is doing that we don't know anything about whatsoever. There are only so many 18 people to go around. And I think that the legacy products that become a lot less sexy, a lot less important within Apple, like the Mac pro, like the Mac mini, like the Mac itself. Um, those don't get the time and attention of the, small number of executives and a team engineers and designers that Apple has working for it. And that there, so that sense of urgency again, it's there, but it's just not being directed to the things that we want. I, I don't disagree. Possible. I, yeah. It's, it's absolutely possible. It's absolutely so possible. Secretive, there's so secretive. You have no way of knowing, right? I mean, that's the, and even, yeah, you'd have, yeah. So all we can do, at this point, it's sort of like there's a black box or something going on inside, and uh, you know, trying to elucidate how it functions, um, pretty darn difficult. I, I don't want us to lose track, though, uh, or lose sight of the fact that Apple is now not the company it was. I mean, we've been talking about Steve yeah. Jobs a lot, and I'm and I'm I don't want to look back, but Apple is not the company it was then. It's it's much bigger. It's much more valuable. It's much more influential. The world has changed, and so now we have. We it's you can't just fit things into that simple four, uh, two by two or four by four product matrix. Um, well, it didn't. It didn't fit under that when Steve was with us. No. Well, I, mean, that, 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 I don't know. I mean, I I would disagree. I mean, I think that this this thing right is. I think I think because they called a knife a phone, they confuse everybody. It's it's really a computer, and under under the in the last couple of years, uh, Apple got very lucky. And there was simultaneously this trend towards mobile. And then it came out with a phone and it came out with tablet. And they could lever very similar technologies. And they had enough of a unified experience that all of a sudden you could have three d different, what seemingly are different devices with uh, different screen sizes. And that just suddenly sucked up a lot of you know, pent-up demand in the marketplace. So I think, uh, I, I think in that regard, that, that is Apple being the same company. Uh, that is a phone instead of a thing we call a Mac. I, I, don't, I, I think it is um, scraping a surface for I'm trying to make distinctions where it fits in your pocket or it just sits on your desktop. I think that's really the only key essential difference between them in, in, in many ways. 
And this, and as you're saying, Brian, they're their company. They're looking forward to the future. You know, they want what's the next big thing, next big market we can go and can you know go and get at. And we will see what that is. Steve? Hopefully, they don't release a you know, car. Hopefully, they don't release a car early, like you know, like <laughs> like they did with a phone. I mean, sorry, this 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 watch. <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> yeah, Steve, Steve. I want to definitely come back to the watch, but but you've been unusually quiet here. You have to be thinking something about some of this. Are you kidding? No, I'm just watching porn on my machine here. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, but, Solid. You know, one of the things uh, talking about Steve Jobs. Uh, I mean, let's face it. The guy hit some really big home runs, and uh, yes. you know, just the right thing at the right time. And I, I think the biggest problem is, is we all got very, very used to seeing those home runs, seeing the next, you know, one more thing that just wowed us completely. And I think for a lot of us, you know, we're kind of waiting for that to happen. Now, the watch was pretty cool. You know, I, I still wear mine. I noticed Mark's still wearing his. Uh, okay. And Brian? Well, he's, three for three. Uh, he's, in wit- he's in witness protection program. Well, yeah. we can't tell. <laughs> yeah, yeah Brian, they don't want him. Brian, are you wearing a watch just so we have the complete list? I, yes, I am. But, I, I, okay. but four, you've heard four, me four. say I, I like my Apple Watch. I don't love it. Right. Okay. Yeah. And that's exactly the way I feel, too. It's, it's like it has got so many cool things about it. But it also has so many irritating little habits. It's it's kind of like that, you know. That I, I don't know how to describe it, but it's just irritating. You know, things you want to have it come up right now so you can show somebody a feature, and you sit there and wait for fifteen or twenty seconds. You know, granted, like uh, right. I think Mark had the perfect point there. They're finally coming out of beta this fall, <laughs> but yeah. uh, you know we. I think that's the biggest thing that a lot of us are are just waiting for is something so completely out of our expectations that just wows us and we all say, that's a new market, that's a new device, I've got to have that. And we haven't seen that in a few years, so... You know, maybe they they won't be able to do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I think, yeah, but 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 ha- I mean, boy, this the, the watch thing makes me crazy because I disagree with both of you on that, and and we'll get to that in a minute. But have 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 we not built everything and anything Apple does up to the point that they can't possibly live up to it? I mean, that's what I yeah. feel like. Every time there's a product announcement, every time we're headed to WWDC or the 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 iPhone announcements or you know whatever's coming up, that you know you get this thing that's supposed to time travel and you know solve solve world hunger and you know be a, 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 a radiation detector all rolled in one inside your inside your cereal box. I mean, come on. Well, I, I ignore I I ignore all the. Uh Rumors. I mean, you, you you can't you can't ha- not be exposed to them because of the environment we're in. But I don't think deeply about them. I just sit back and watch and see what where are they going to have because all the rumors are they they have some sort of grounding in something people want and they're all eminently logical or eminently possible. Um, but you never know what's going to happen. And in that regard, I was totally blown away this year. Uh, no new nothing to buy. You mean- Again, maybe. Maybe I'm just looking at this as a as, as a shareholder, sort of thinking Tim and company. You know, uh, until you have that next big rocket ship, you know, you can sell more of what you got now, just doing a better job of keeping them fresh and keeping them compelling, so that people will continue to buy them. I, I don't know about you guys. I don't want them to come out until they're until they're ready. I mean, Mark, I didn't want the pizza we had at midnight to come out of the oven half baked, and Brian, I didn't want the apple pie to come out half baked. You know, I've, I want it to be right. <laughs> I mean, so. Well, to I, be fair, though, that the, the, that pie was probably baked, you know, the day before. Well, <laughs> <laughs> spoken like a true oh, geek. So, Thank so, you. Oh, so you, so you ate it at twelve oh one p.m. Yeah. Twelve oh one a.m. <laughs> no, I I want to go back to the watch though, um, because I don't know. You both seem to feel like it might be coming out of beta at this point. It had this was a brand new device. I mean, up to that point, what the Pebble was the only thing that had been out for any length of time, and and they were trying to make improvements. The Apple Watch brought a whole lot of stuff to our wrists, and Apple learned from it. 
And so, okay, so for a brand new product category, and Apple didn't exactly figure out and read our minds and know exactly what we all wanted. And interestingly, I bet if we went around the room, if we picked our primary uses, I bet I bet there's some variance there. So Apple is is now adjusting what they're delivering, and it and it seems to be hitting a lot more targets, no question about it. But it's because of the, the things that we found, Steve, to your point, annoying, or to Mark's point, lacking, you know. So I don't know that it's really fair to say it's coming out of beta. It's just getting better. Ah, it's coming out of beta. Listen, Fine tune. <laughs> yeah, I, I, so one can argue that the Apple Watch, one, uh, lots of thoughts here. Apple's approach to Apple Watch was different than anything else that was being done. One can argue that it was impossible for Apple to know how we would use these devices until it actually got on some wrists. Um, to that end, Apple put it on some wrists, lots of wrists, in fact. And Apple learned from that experience. Uh, the Craig and, and Phil, uh, Craig Federighi and, and Phil Schiller talked about that with John Gruber on the talk show live. I, I mean, it, saying exactly that. Now they know what it, now they know what people are going to do with it. They sandbagged with the original release in the first place because they really right. weren't sure what people were going to do. And that's a nice way for that's a nice way for saying they unleashed a beta. I I yeah. listened to that and I we parsed <laughs> it exactly the same way. We, well, actually, usually when you release a beta, it's just doing more than it can do. But in Apple's case, it actually hobbled the device because. They wanted to make sure that it could actually last through a full day of usage, and so it's a different and whatever. It's a t- tomato yeah. tomato. It is. It's a yes. different kind of. It's a different kind of beta for sure. But uh, I, I don't know. I, I think we have been in beta, and the fact that Watch OS three, which to me, I, I, the 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 phrase I used during the event itself was that um, this might actually bring Apple Watch alive. Yeah. Um, it the fact that it will run on the original hardware says very specifically that uh, that that we've we've been in beta all this time. Yeah, so and that's not uh, how. Ooh. But how yeah, else can you do it? So that, again, that's a that's a very important thing. I know back uh, in some of the work I did, you know, ten years ago for about a five year period, you know, when I was at Drobo, is one thing was just tracking just sort of the the attitude of, of the people who were buying. Now there's some people who very clearly identify as early adopters. Um, then there's a lot of other people who, you know, they'll sort of wait until something is, they'll wait to the second generation until something is proven that, uh, you know, it's not just going to be flakiness and they're not just burning their money and sending on fire. So I, I think in that regard, uh, you know, I think again, what Apple's doing here is, Maybe they willfully just decide, okay, we'll have these core faithful fanatics out there. We have all these other things, and we're not quite sure what to do. Let's unleash it. And on this show before, I don't know, Brian, if you and uh, you, Steve, have heard me, that some of my critique about the device is it tried to do too much you know, at, all at once. You know, and instead, I think the thing we all, I believe, tend to like about it is I think we like notifications. I think we like activity tracker. Uh, I think we maybe also, dare I say, like the fact that we'll tell time. And then after that, I think we're just going to have different expectations of, you know, what the, what the follow on features are that uh, we use it for. Um, but you know, I I don't know. I mean, I don't think that would have been that hard to see, uh, especially since some of the commentary leading up to it as well. What's the problem that an Apple watch will solve? Is it just for people who are too lazy to pull a phone out of their pocket? Well, that, characterizes it in sort of a you know, comical way but um that is <laughs> that is the purpose that people are assigning to the watch whether whether it's justified or not but uh you know it's it is very useful just you know just you know this past weekend driving to go see you know my uh my nephew you know, a symphony concert and they're performing before they jump on a trip to go tour and perform in europe and my brother was a little bit late, you know, so he got the thing. And I'm just driving around. There's no way I could pull the full out, but I can certainly look at the lock and says, okay, you just go and get seated. We're, we may be a little bit late due to traffic. And you're just perfect. And I could also dictate a response back where there's no way I could, yeah. you know, you know even, even with Siri, there's no way I could have you know, given a quick and timely response. So um, 
I, I think I think the market is found in just court, clued in on what people want. And again, it's a computer. People want fast. I mean, you know, that doesn't. I'm sorry, that doesn't take you know, deep knowledge and deep, deep insight. Yeah. You know, actually, if anything, it seems to me if we want to speculate on the operation inside the machine, it seems we had a you know. I speculate we probably had disagreement in Apple on what the most important things were. So instead of having a maniacal focus, they just greenlit everything and just confused the hell out of everybody. Well, and I, I think, you know, to your point there, too, I, I really kind of feel like Apple miscalculated the, uh, the uh, actual number of developers who were going to get out there and say, oh, I'm going to add this little watch app for my uh, wonderful little iOS app over here because uh, I mean there is a surprising number of apps out there for this doggone thing some mm -hmm. of them are very well done uh, I did a review today for Apple World Today on, on Streaks which won an Apple Design Award last week and I love that app it comes up quickly it acts like uh, I mean it just works like it was designed by Apple uh, then there are other apps that I get really, really frustrated with that aren't necessarily in that, like you said, that core of uh, things that you think that Apple uh, may have been thinking about when they were originally designing the device. You know, there, there are things that it does that are really surprising, really amazing, but they weren't necessarily in that, you know, core focus that Apple was looking at for the original object. So, anyway... I, I kind of, you know, you said that, and I immediately thought about all the apps that are available out there. I just went through and did a purge yesterday. Uh, mm. Probably got rid of 60 apps off of this <laughs> stock on things. So. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah, Steve, I'm, I'm with you. You know, and I think that some of that is the developer's fault. They probably can't be blamed for, you know, wanting to say, oh, I have a, I have an app on, on the watch. Yeah. Um, but some of those apps are just i mean yeah you can say you have it and it might deliver a little bit of information it might deliver a little control but it, 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 they're just not good i mean i think the know, watch is uh, uh sorry to interrupt no yeah. no that's oh, yeah. uh, that, that that's it i mean it just it's 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 unfortunate that I think things were tarnished a little bit by some of those me too apps that i just i just want to have a place on the watch face yeah, and we and we all know that that you know there are a wide variety of you know apps out there, and I think the watch, because of its physical size and all the other resource constraints that it has, you know, it's probably the harshest testing ground out there for for a good app and good software. You know, stuff that might slide on you know, on an iPhone or on the Mac. You know, no, it's it's do or die. I think the watch is much more binary on whether we'll th think something is a good app or pile of junk. Good point. Guys, we're starting to run short on time, so I'm, I'm going to wrap this up with and ask you each to give me one or two sentences. No dissertations, just <laughs> good luck. One or two sentences. If if you could pick something to to address with Apple, um, what uh, if, on the urgency issue? What do you think their their urgency should be? What or where do you think the urgency should be focused? Wow. Yeah, that's fun, Brian. I'm mm. going to I'm going to give you the first one. Find ways to better scale in terms of uh, having legacy products maintained and not forgotten. Be urgent about that. So fine, you got the the A team moved on from the 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 Mac Pro. Some B teamers can maintain the darn thing. Same thing with the uh, you know Mac Mini. Same thing with the darn Thunderbolt display. For goodness sake, Thunderbolt display is still being sold. Are you kidding me? What a pile of crap. It's just insane for for a pile of money too. You can get you can get twenty Adele. times the display for less money. Hmm. Sorry, you yeah. said no dissertations. Does, no. Do tie rates count? Oh, no, well, <laughs> I think so, we're, I think we're past that point. Find a way to manage the legacy products so that they can continue while the A team focuses on the new products. Okay. And this is still channeling John Keat again on that. And, and I just want to clarify, just to make sure that I'm with you on that. When you say legacy products, you're not talking about five-year-old Macs. You're just talking about keeping the existing product lines updated and current. Correct. Got it. Okay. Steve? If I was going to sit down with Apple and uh, 
you know, say, put your focus on this. I think the two things that I would be looking at the most is looking at the Apple Watch as a replacement, future replacement, uh, for the iPhone. In other words, giving it cellular data and the ability to do voice over IP calls. And, uh, you know, looking at the transition from a device that's this big to a device that's that big. <laughs> There's a bit of a difference there. Uh, that would be the first one. Secondly, uh, get that wow product, whatever it happens to be. If there's something in the lab that is 90% there, let's get it out soon. Uh, you know, uh, there, whether it's the fans like us who have been around for uh, you know 22 <laughs> years or more, or the uh, people who are just getting into the Apple ecosystem. Uh, there needs to be that thing that's going to grab people and just say, wow, I didn't know I needed this. I've got to go ahead and buy it. Interesting. Okay. Mark, you started this uh, fiasco, so I'll, I'll give you the third. Okay. So um, I like the way Brian eloquently uh, summed it up because I, I agree with that. And that's sort of, you know, Yay, me. So I contain, which is, you know, you know, again, you know, as a, <laughs> You know, as uh, as users, right? Is people do need you know, continuous improvement. You know, and to to the extent as simple as simple as the interests are aligned with Intel of having drop in replacements at higher chip cycles, you know, there is absolutely it's no no reason not to. I mean, I can understand when chips just are not available, but when chips are available, but you know, you're on this cycle. Oh, we'll only be at the leading edge of the new generation of Intel chips, and then nuts to you, everything in between. It's it's rain, it's feast or famine. Uh, I don't think that's the best way to run a business. I think you know, they should constantly have you know, new things on a regular basis. And if it becomes boring like fashion, well, guess what? The iPhone is boring too. I mean, they, for a while, the biggest debate was, okay, is, is, it, is it going to be in June this year or is it going to be in September like people say? Well, now we've learned, okay, it's, it's a September cycle. So maybe the cookie monster will surprise us and we have something in August, <laughs> you know. But uh, – uh, you know, I think you know, they're we're in a capitalist system. They're trying to struggle. They're coming out with you know, they're obviously working on new ideas. They they should be doing that. But um, to the extent that you know there isn't you know, there is no sign of a declining market for you know things like Macs or other devices. Unlike the iPad, where it got uh, you know yeah. not cannibalized. It got cannibalized by above by people trading up to an iPhone. So I think yeah, until something like that happens, you know, Apple. Uh, you know, Mr. Cook keeps saying, you know, <laughs> about all the, uh, you know, quarter to quarter increases and they're selling to new switchers and how it outgrew, you know, the rest of the, you know, it was able to grow and the rest of the PC makers were shrinking. That is goodness. Continue to order and feed it. And, you know, the other thing I think, you know, hopefully on this, I just feel like, you know, I'm a piece of uh, sand to an oyster and, you know, it creates a little bit of an irritant and you get a, you get a good pearl in the process. And if not Apple, you know, just, for a half of one percent of your cash, you know, I will go away entirely. You know, <laughs> you, you know, you know how you know how to find me. Just uh, just give me a billion dollars, and uh, you know, then I will join Brian in the witness protection program. <laughs> First time any Excellent. guest has ever described themselves as a piece of sand in an oyster. That's 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 interesting. I I, I guess my my comment Command would, of language. <laughs> yeah. My thing would be, Mr. Cook, the first thing you want to do is you make sure you don't listen to any of these three guys because they don't know what they're talking about. Um, no, I think I'd say, you know. That, can, Chuck, that's, that's, that's great advice, actually. Yeah. That's always, I never, <laughs> I'd never listen to me, man. <laughs> no, I, I, I think I would say just continue. To, you've been known for quality. And, and I firmly believe in quality. So continue on the quality cycle. Don't jump at the latest, greatest, cool, trendy thing. You know, fashion, you got to pay attention to fashion, no question. But but don't, you know, have it go with the stock market and the, and the skirt hems, up and down, up and down, up and down. Continue to focus on quality. You've done a great job up till now. Keep it going because that's that to me is, is still why I buy products. That's why I recommend buy, people buy products. And that's why I very, 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 very seldom have anyone come back and say, you know, I'm really disappointed with my Apple product. That's my take on it. 
Guys, this has been You're really not disappointed with your Apple pencil. Uh, I, I don't have one because I don't, can't draw, Steve. So. <laughs> Steve, how many of those have you had and lost? <laughs> That's it. Uh, just number one. I, uh. Well, I never use it, so. <laughs> oh, that's right. You don't have any apps to use it with. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, that's another show. That's another show. Um, right quick, just to, to reiterate where folks can find you. Brian, where can they find you? I'm at MacObserver.com on a daily basis. My personal blog is GeekTools.com. Great. Thank you so much for being here. We hope that the statute of limitations runs next time and you'll be able to join us in video. Excellent. <laughs> Steve, how about you? You can find me uh, every day over at AppleWorld.today. I also do uh, some writing for the good folks over at OWC, and you can uh, read that writing at blog.maxsales.com. Terrific. Mr. Fuccio? Oh, two ways. You know, if you're a LinkedIn user, you can find me there. Otherwise, the best thing is on Twitter, at Mark Fuccio, and uh, I've met a lot of good people there. Great. I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, you can find me at macvoices.com, where you found this, hopefully, unless, unless you're subscribed, which is even better. And you can find me on Twitter as uh, at Chuck Joyner. So please, check us out. Guys, thank you so much. Great discussion. Really appreciate all the views and wisdom. Uh, a lot of good things here. And, and folks, let us know if you agree with us or disagree with us. The, 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 the lines are open. They certainly are. I was about to say call now, but we don't have that kind of line. So just <laughs> tw tweet me. Tweet me. Until the next time, this is the Mac Jury on Mac Voices. I'm Chuck Joyner. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes, links to subscribe, and to connect with Chuck on Twitter, Google+, Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, SoundCloud, the Mac Voices blog, the Mac Voices Dispatch, our weekly newsletter, and on Mac Voices Magazine free on Flipboard that helps you do more with your Apple tech. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>